What are these? These are my prompts for NLB tasks. For example, this is the prompt that I use for sentiment analysis. This is the one that I use for multi-class classification. This is for topic modeling. This is for text summarization and sometimes even generating word embeddings on the downside. And you don't necessarily need all these prompts at all. For using ChatGPT, you need prompt and then you need to parse the output of those prompts. We should say goodbye to those old school cycle learn days that we could use model.fit, model.predict and boom, the predictions are there. Now you need to prompt them and parse the output. That's the whole story, my friend. Well, as of now, scikit-learn is integrated with LLM. That means you can still use model.fit or model.predict, but still use ChatGPT on backend without you prompting or parsing the output of the prompt. What was the package name? Scikit-learn LLM. And I don't need to use the prompts anymore? No, we don't necessarily need these prompts. Well, on backend, it will use some prompts for you. You just need to just type, let's say, model.fit, and here is my sentiment analysis scenario and your input, and boom, the output is there. Very similar to... I think our neighbor is burning the food. We do have a fire alarm system here. Oh, shit. I should get to the balcony. your video ideas don't try this one let's go hello my friends welcome to this video which we're going to talk about a nascent open source package called scikit-learn llm but you can guess from the name that we're going to combine those pretty familiar syntaxes that we used to work with scikit-learn this time for interaction with large language models, namely OpenAI models and ChatGPT. So now instead of you writing down a prompt for doing sentiment analysis or any NLP task with your given data set, we could still use this new package that will handle all the works on backend for us, the prompts, parsing, but we just need to say model.fit, model.predict. So very similar to what we used to have with cycle and this time we can do the same thing, do the same syntax and similar coding, but on backend we are totally leveraging a new technology, which is now large language models and open AI models. So let's check it out how we can enable it in our workload and let's give it a try. So let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome to Scikit LLM, my friends. Well, that seems to be a very interesting combination, having Scikit learn somewhere and now having these large language model capabilities. So let's see what is the proposed value of this new library and what we're going to achieve by this. So although this, I didn't see that in the official documentation of the Scikit learn, but the functionality and syntax are pretty similar. Remember that with Scikit learn we had lots of easy to follow syntaxes like model.fit or model.train, model predict so we're going to use the same syntax but this time the backend model is not a model that we are going to train or from scratch the backend model is like open AI models for example gpt 3.5 or chat gpt so think about this some of the pretty well-known text-based use cases for example uh, doing sentiment analysis or doing categorization let's say you have top, multiple labels that you want to do topic modeling What's the, the topic of or the title of this given comment, given survey, given text, whatever? Or if you want to do text summarization, or if you want to do text translation or generate embedding out of the text. So for these sort of pretty well-known and structured NLP use cases, you might think that I can still use OpenAI models like ChatGPT. Yes, you can, but as we all know, in order to use ChatGPT for any NLP task, you have to specify in your prompt what you are going to do. For example, if you have received survey results 
and you want to do sentiment analysis to check if they're negative or positive, you have to write this down in a prompt to the model that, hey, I'm giving you some survey results, some reviews, some comments. You have to do sentiment analysis for me and tell me if it is positive, negative, or neutral. Defining that prompt in a clear manner is one thing by itself is a challenge. And when you get the output of that prompt or the output of the model, the model should say this is negative, this is positive, you sort of need to parse the output. Or even if you use functions, you have to make sure you're defining the structure properly. You're defining your prompt properly to make sure you're not going to the loop of parsing the output, how one by one you push your data to the prompt, you get the sentiment analysis out of it by opening a model. So you will see that there are some certainly workaround and potential challenges, as we all have faced up if you have developed such a thing for your large language model applications. But today, with Scikit LLM, you don't need to write any single prompt. For all these NLP tasks I told you, you feel like you're coding in Scikit-Learn, but on backend, it's not your model, it's ChatGPT, without any prompt. Let me show you how. This is my Python notebook, you can certainly use any notebook, any ID you want, just see to make sure that you have Python environment. And for start, just say pip install scikit LLM. That's it. Then I scroll down. Here I am specifying my OpenAI key. I'll, uh, I'll definitely revoke it after recording this video, so make sure you, you keep them safe since they are confidential. And then the second thing is your organization org. It seems to be an optional thing, and how you get that, if you go to your openair.com, you log in there, you go your profile under setting, you will see the organiz organization ID of your OpenAI. And of course, you have your Azure OpenAI key or OpenAI key here. Then on the top of that, what I'm going to do I'm going to start with zero shot, zero shot GPT classifier. So here, I'm not providing, let's say, any um, few shot examples to the prompt stuff or writing down that, hey, I want to do some sentiment analysis stuff, nothing. I just have a data set, and that data set is coming from uh, SKLR LLM library that we installed. So let's see what is this data. I printed X and Y. You'll see that these are some comments. I think these are something I, I didn't really read but it seems to be a, a survey or a, a review of people about something not sure maybe yeah maybe it's the movie reviews and on the wire label i have the labeled equivalent risk given comment for example the first one is positive positive negative neutral so i have three labels right so I grab this data, that can be your data for sure, that's just an example, and I'm saying that I want to use zero shot GPT classifier to use my chat GPT or GPT 3.5 from OpenAI to have it as my classifier, and I feed it to my data. X and Y, see, it is exactly similar to what you used to have in scikit-learn, like fit, that predicate stuff, and that's it now when I have this sort of CLF fit it with my data, I can use it to predict based on new data. So in this example, I use again the same thing that I have it there, X. And if I show you, when I printed my predicted labels, there you go, I have them all predicted. Not only that, now I have, I just typed it by myself. I typed a bad, a good review and a bad review. And I used the same model and I said dot predict, given these inputs, it told me the first one is positive, the second one is negative. So you feel like, it's like a model that I trained by myself using Cyclone, but it's not. Actually, I'm using uh, on backend OpenAI model, and you don't see any sort of prompt stuff, parsing the output of the prompt, pushing them back to a data frame. On backend, this has been all configured for me by this package. I actually went through uh, their source code. And I found that in the prompt folder they have in the GitHub repo. And by the way, I'll add this GitHub repo and all the notebooks and codes to the Discord channel, which the link of the Discord channel is, uh, is under video descriptions down below. And when you go to the Discord channel, you click on the reference section and you will see the link of that there. And I clicked on templates and I saw that these are sort of the prompts they're using um, for let's say zero shot, some other few shot examples, we're gonna go through that actually. So this is basically what it is abstracted for you. You don't see it, it's on backend, but you just go ahead with something similar to Scikit-Learn. Okay, moving further, another example. Now this time, what I'm gonna do, let's say I have no label data. 
I could never imagine that one day I could code with syntaxes of scikit-learn to train a model or have a model, not training a model, or having a model without any label, I can have classification. Seriously, this is what is happening. Let's say you have no label. You just have those movie reviews. You will see that I got the same data, but this time I just got X. I don't want to get the label. I have no labels. And then I can still fit it to the model. But again, we are not training any model here. We are not fine-tuning OpenAI models. Although you can do fine-tuning by SQLM package for OpenAI too, but here I'm not doing any fine-tuning. I'm just saying that this is my given data that I don't have any label, but I know that this data should be positive, negative, or neutral. So classified for me. That's it. I did that predict again, and look at that. The same labels got predicted for me without even providing any label data. This is pretty cool. I know when you think about backend, everything makes sense because it's using GPT. They don't need necessary label data. They understand what you, what you mean by saying negative, positive. But this is really, really powerful. If we could go all the way back to the time we didn't have such a thing and think about one day we will have such a thing that I'm discussing right now, we would be amazed, but we have it right now, so use it. How about this? If I have multi-label classification, for example, I have a review of the movie, you have to tell me if it is positive, plus um, what was the name of the movie as well, some uh, multiple labels for the same one review, okay? This is how we're gonna do it. So we say that these are the labels you have to tell me, for example, the review is about quality, price, delivery, or three of them, two of them, one of them. Maximum until three labels you can grab from here to associate it with the given input. Just one review, by the way. And the same thing. I do that predict and look at that. The first movie review is just about quality. The second is delivery. Uh, maybe it's not just movie by the way i maybe it's because product very variety for movie doesn't make sense but look at that for some of the reviews i have two labels and i can have max to three again without any label data that's it moving on um these are examples about let's like, say sentiment analysis and topic modeling but more than that you can do vectorization or creating embeddings out of it just just import gpt vectorize and give your input x to text and that's it the embeddings are there you can do this one is i think doing summarization yes gpt summarizer imported from circular llm you can choose your model and say maximum 15 words summarize each single input that i have in my x column that i showed you before and look at that each row correspond to a summarize input from those reviews as an example um not only that, you can do translation as well. For example, I imported a translation data set from this package. This is the input language. And I said that for GPT translator, I want to have it as English. And this is the result back for me. And when I print it now, the result is in English. So I translated a given prompt to another language without necessarily typing in the prompt or having a prompt. Or I created the embeddings without even writing a prompt. I um, labeled my data, or categorized my data, did sentiment analysis without any prompt or parsing the output of the model, just using something that I used to be familiar with, easy to follow, called Scikit-Learn. Not only that, I went through the documentation. Actually, there are a couple of, two more actually f nice examples. You can do also fine tuning for the models from GPT that they support fine tuning using similar Scikit-Learn syntax as we discussed. And also, the other thing that I saw here is that, uh, let me go here. You can even have few shot classification. I, I, I showed you zero shot, but few shot would be, the difference is that it will get some of the samples of your training data and add it to the prompt to tell to the model that, hey, here are some examples. Remember we had few shots in the prompt that you will give some examples of input and output to the prompt to let the model know better what you're going to achieve. So if you do the same thing, it will sort of randomize maybe some of the samples of your training data and add it to the prompt to make the performance slightly better. So that was a quick review of what is this package. I saw that it's it's upcoming to the trend. I think they released that almost three months ago. Well, they are releasing new versions. The last one is for three weeks ago based on the date that I'm recording, which is today, September 10th to 2023. And it got 2.5K stars, and I thought that it's certainly worth to go through that and, and showcase to you 
and give you sort of art of possibilities again if you're using such NLP tasks and you're planning for using open air models maybe a nice and easy to start way instead of writing all the prompts is coming here check out what the prompts they're using give an idea or just install this package and move on and and we'll see what how you're gonna get the results with just saving further time and not needed really for you to develop your own custom class of parsing or prompt generation so on and so forth and of course kudos to all to the contributors of this open source package and i hope you just this video that's all there is nothing more practical than having a vision in life without a vision you are hopeless you are disappointed everyone can stop you with just putting one single obstacle in front of you you're like a leaf blowing in the wind and that's what not your call to be you are called to be a constructor visionary of paradise or vision that's really who you are you're gonna lose whatever you have to lose and you're all together in this game so dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video